Thank you so much to um, Jason and Ryan Norris, uh, the entire Norris family, and to the entire Dora Bond industry where we are today in Steelton, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's great of them to have me here today to talk about a critical issue in, uh, no pun intended, fueling a 21st century Pennsylvania economy geared to growing family sustaining jobs and keeping them here in Pennsylvania. With me, Jason Norris is going to tell you a little bit more about Dora Bond, but the first part I want to tell you is it's a family company with deep roots in the Commonwealth. They've been in business for more than 50 years since being founded in 1960 as a manufacturer of coatings for steel products. Since then, the company's expanded steadily, always maintaining a focus on providing good jobs right here in its home state. And now, here, and, and specifically here in Steelton, um, and you know, we've seen a, a decrease in manufacturing. As you're gonna hear shortly, this is an uptake in manufacturing, and it has a direct connection uh, to the development of Marcella Shale in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Uh, when Bethlehem Steel made the decision to end its operations in 2003, Dora Bond stepped in and saved the facility by acquiring it and continued pipe making operations. With respect to the new contract uh, that I think is just such an important uh, part of the economy here in um, Western Pennsylvania, Dora Bond recently announced that to fulfill, fulfill it, they will hire an additional 150 full-time workers and add a second shift of production here in Steelton. I'm going to talk a little bit about the growth of Marcella Shale in just a moment, but what I'd like to do is just, I'd like to turn it over to Jason Norris, who's the head of Dora Bond. And uh, Jason, please, if you don't mind and tell us, expand upon that story, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us out here on this sunny but windy and cold day. But I first, uh, my name is Jason Norris. I am with Dorabond, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about our, our company. Uh, Dorabond is a family company which is headquartered in Pennsylvania since my grandfather started it in 1960. Throughout our long history, we have chosen to reinvest in Pennsylvania keeping our focus on doing business and reinvesting right here at home. We are certainly Pennsylvania proud. Part of that commitment to being a hometown company came in 2003 when we acquired this pipe mill from Bethlehem Steel, rather than let it, clo let it close its doors for good. We had pipe coating operations here since the early 1990s, and by 1999, the mill was effectively closed due to lack of reinvestment by Bethlehem Steel. In fact, the Steelton Pipe Mill was the last manufacturing facility that they owned and they were only interested in making steel at the time. In order to save the 40 or so jobs that we had at our coating operation, we decided to buy the entire pipe mill and try our hand at making pipe, which was a massive undertaking. That, product, that process took many twists and turns along the way because a company from China was trying to outbid us at every step so they could move this equipment overseas. That would have been devastating to this area. We were fighting for our survival and in the end, with the support of the United Steelworkers Union, we prevailed. Not only did we save jobs then, but we were proud to be expanding our operation here in Steelton over the next few years. We would also like to thank Dominion Energy, a leader in natural gas energy solutions, for choosing us to manufacture the pipe for the Atlantic Coast Pipeline right here in Pennsylvania as we do realize that they have a choice where to buy their pipe. Luckily, Dominion is one of those companies that puts safety and quality above price. We constantly battle foreign manufactured pipe that is unfairly sent to our shores. As a direct result of Marcellus Shale's success in Pennsylvania, the need to expand its use, we are proud to announce the hiring of about 150 additional employees this coming year. We know that Dominion is one of the largest transporters of natural gas in the United States, and faith in our product is a testament to our commitment to all the men and women that come to work here every day that are dedicated to delivering the highest quality pipe possible. We can have the best equipment in the world, but we believe our people make the difference. 
We also take pride that a local Pennsylvania company like ours has been selected to provide pipe for a project that is so important for our state's economic future. Even though we are here in Stilton today, we know that the Marcellus shale industry has been a tremendous benefit to many other businesses and workers across the state. We and everyone at Durabon look forward to the continued benefits of a strong energy industry in Pennsylvania and uh, a strong commitment to keeping this industry growing and a strong commitment to keep Pennsylvania growing. That's all I have. Thank you. Jason, thank you so much. As uh, you, um, Jason, stay here because um, we'll take some questions. But as Jason knows, uh, um, the Marcellus has given them an opportunity to build pipe, 150 new jobs. And I just wanted to say a few things real briefly about Marcellus and then turn it over to questions. As many of you know, more than 30,000 construction jobs and hundreds of permanent jobs in Marcus Hook down in the southeast are developed for a new pipeline and processing facility for Marcellus National Gas. A doubling of the workforce at Sloan Lubrication System in Armstrong County, Pennsylvania and 600 new jobs in a new natural gas power plant in Jessup, Pennsylvania. The fact of the matter is, uh, there have been some 245,000 jobs supported both direct and ancillary with the Marcellus related industries. At this time, I'd like to turn it over uh, for questions to Jason and myself. Jason, again, thank you for uh, being here in Steelton, PA. Thank you. Employing these great individuals and uh, producing uh, the, the quality work that you do. Both they have steel fabrication and then they have the pipeline in the back part. We'll take any questions. Yes, yes, Tony, yeah. I think that the shale tax is punitive. They're already downward, uh, there are already downward pressures on the industry. Uh, the development of Marcella shale is uh, is really driving the economy in Pennsylvania and it's not limited to Western Pennsylvania, it's all over the state. And an example of that today is right here in Steelton where there's gonna be 150 new jobs for building pipe. Well, this, so the 5% severance tax from what I understand is on the production of the gas. And what the business we're in is the downstream business. It's a takeaway capacity after the gas is drilled and produced and is put in midstream pipelines. It eventually ends up in large pipelines to move it to, uh, to move it to markets. So it's hard to determine what the what the direct effect is, but it's it 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 eventually will it will affect us. This what we do normally lags production by a number of years because the gas has to be drilled first. And then later down the road, it, there's large OD pipelines to move it to, to different markets. Do you oppose any tax, severance tax? Is this just one that's been proposed by the governor? I think what's been proposed by the governor, this, this, it, it's essentially, uh, and I know it's in two parts, but it's essentially it, 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 almost an eight, from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, almost like an 8% uh, equivalent. Now, it, has, it is in two parts, the taxes, but I definitely think it will uh, really, the, the Marcellus Shale Development has got worldwide pressures from o OPEC already. There's downward pressures already. I think that the tax proposed by the governor will have a negative impact on the development of Marcellus Shale and the positive effects of it's having on the economy. Would you be able to agree to any kind of difference? Tony, we're not there. I think that what's on the plate is what needs to be discussed. The key thing here is, is we want to continue to see the development of Marcellus Shale in Pennsylvania and the good jobs it's for producing both direct and downstream. Do you want to comment on any of the other details of the governor's budget that have been circling out here? Not today, Tony, because I haven't really heard it all. I just, I've, I've read it, but I don't know what's officially going to be in it. But I do know because he's been specific about the Marcellus tax, uh, where he wants to head there. And I think it's in the wrong direction. Karen, go ahead and then Brad. Have you received um, a, a call? Are you we, we are. We will be tonight. Okay. Yes. I don't. I don't. I, I have not seen it yet. You don't know that about the county tax? I don't. I don't. I do know about the Marcella Shale two, two component taxes uh, because the governor has been going around the state talking about it. Yes. Brad. Brad. 
Well, no, 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 Brad. Um, actually, in, in J Jay and uh, Justin will will go into the details about the tax, but my understanding is of the governor's proposal that it does not in that it does not subsume, for the lack of a better verb, uh, the impact fee. It does distribute some money to the same places where the quote unquote impact fee goes, but it is not a wholesale adoption like on top of the impact fee. Um, Jay, Justin, what are the two, can you just explain the two taxes uh, that the governor's proposed with Marcelo Shale? Sure, exactly. There's... Come up front and just ex So our understanding is that the tax is in two parts. It's a 5% um, tax on the, on the value of the gas, and then there's a 4.7 uh, cent surcharge on volume of gas, so, so that's per unit. So, um, so, so the effective rate of the tax will change based on the value of gas, what it's going for in the market. So the, actually, the lower the price of gas is, the higher the effective rate is. So w given the prices that Pennsylvania producers are, uh, are selling for right now, the effective rate is anywhere between 7 and 8.5%, actually. So it's an average of, of somewhere in, in the 7.5% range across the state. So with the impact fee, our understanding of the proposal is that he would, the, the governor would ask the impact fee to, to go away, but he would replace that those monies with some of, of the monies from from his proposed severance tax. Some of it. Not, some of it. Not one for one from right. what we understand. We're not uh, quite sure. Well, well it's, you know, it, it's based on a lot of projections, um, based on, on production. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see how those numbers come out. But, but uh, t uh, Karen, any other question on that? No, today's just really on the Marcellus on the Marcellus proposal. Well, I, I'm going to tell you, Brad. It's going to. I think what we really have here is a significant increase in taxes. Um, that the governor's proposing, uh, and that and that you know we can see the shell game with respect to who's paying for the new taxes, but the fact of the matter is, is the bottom line is, is there's going to be he wants in significant increased spending and significantly new taxes. Now we're going to get the details, uh, but I think most you know most of the Pennsylvanians want fiscal responsibility and fiscal stewardship, and they want us to be a, a, a looking at spending as well. Everybody's committed to making sure that the numbers stay um, for public education investment. We're at 10.5 billion. We're already the highest ever in the Commonwealth's history. But let me get back to the point here about Marcella Shale. This is an important economic driver, not only for uh, the Northern Tier, not only for Southwestern Pennsylvania, but for the entire state. And coming here to Dora Bond, the point is this. There's 150 new jobs for pipeline directly connected as part of the downstream, um, or, or, or do you use midstream, Jason? Downstream. Downstream with respect to the economy. Yes. Yeah, I, I just think that I, I, that that's what I'm hearing. I'm going to get the full briefing tonight. Okay. But your expectation is yes. That the yeah. Tax yes. Correct, Karen. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Brad, I don't know. I, I <laughs> you know, I just I have not had a briefing yet on, on it. I'm not. Although today, t today, and my we're going to meet with staff to hear what they have gleaned so far, but we get an official briefing tonight. What do you think the House's leaders Republican House's leaders decide, you know, if your expectation is Well Karen, the only thing I would say right now is back to Durabond. Uh, I just I think it's important that everybody know the positive impact that the development of Marcellus Shale is having. Uh, and look right here in the manufacturing sector, 150 new jobs for pipes with respect to being able to move natural gas to market. Jason, yeah, and thank I think you. that's I think that's the greatest impact because these are manufacturing jobs and we and they they do pay higher than service center jobs generally and we have a 401k program and we have fantastic health insurance here 
and we our our mission is is uh, as a company as a family business is to keep that going uh, you know and 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 where people can come to work and 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 have it make a make a great great living and keep that up it's difficult to do in in the in a market where there's constant threats all the time uh, you know this business is up and down and that's just the nature of the energy business and any any roadblock that's put in the way of that of that development is going to be detrimental to to us and to uh, the citizens of Pennsylvania It's hard to say and difficult for me to comment on. I mean, from a tax perspective, I believe that most any tax like that just ends up in the consumers comes out of the consumers' pockets anyway. People that buy the gas. You know, and, and I think you're 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 we're much better off to keep economic development moving ahead. Uh, you know, and not and I'm not just saying that because we are a manufacturer. We support the local economy wherever we can. That building is full of a lot of machines that require maintenance items and tooling and gaskets and valves and and you know and we do what we can to support all the local companies around around here as well. We understand that impact. You're, you have about 350 total employees. Mm -hmm. And the, but but the key thing that Jason was just mentioning here, and he said it obviously a lot more articulately than I would. But they're providing work for people in the area as well because they are giving work to those that are around here um, with respect to it, equipment and service. And uh, anytime you have a, a, a successful manufacturer, um, they're going to have a positive impact for the entire uh, entire region. Tony, do you want to get some specific interviews? Okay. Okay, thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll be glad to take any questions personally that you have.